I'm not sure my camera works. Oh well. Um, yeah, so this is Irene Idisley, I think, by Amanda McKittrick Ross, um, archived on Project Gutenberg, and my cat is trying to bite me, so ow. Okay, go. Okay, um, so let's see if this is really as bad as people say. Chapter 1. Sympathize with me indeed. Ah, no. Cast your sympathy on the chill waves of troubled waters. Fling it on the oasis of... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Fling it on the oasis of futurity. Dash it against the rock of gossip. Or, better still, allow it to remain within the false and faithless bosom of buried scorn. Such were a few remarks of Irene as she paced the beach of limited freedom, alone and unprotected. <laughs> Sympathy can wound the beast of trodden patience. It hath no rival to ensure the feelings we possess, save that of sorrow. The gloomy mansion stands firmly within the ivy-covered, stoutly-built walls of Dunfern, vast in proportion and magnificent in display. It has been built over 300 years, and its structure stands respectively distant from modern advancement, and in some degrees it could boast of architectural designs rarely, if ever, attempted since its construction. The entrance to this beautiful home of Sir Hugh Dunfer, Dunfern, the present owner, is planned on most antique principles. Nothing save an enormous iron gate meets the gaze of the visitor, who at first is inclined to think about, to think that all public rumors relative to its magnificence are only the utterances of the boastful and idle. Nor until within its winding paths of finest pebble, studded here and there with huge stones of unpolished granite, could the mind for a moment conceive or entertain the faintest idea of its quaint grandeur. Beautiful, however, as Dunfern Mansion may seem to the anxious eye of the beholder, yet, is not, yet it is not altogether free from mystery. While many of its rooms, with walls of crystal, are gorgeously and profusely furnished, others are locked incessantly against the foot of the cautious intruder, having in them only a few traditional relics of no material consequence whatever, or even interest, to any outside the ancestral line of its occupants. It had often been the chief subject of comment among the few distinguished visitors welcomed within its spacious apartments, while seemingly the finest rooms of the mansion owned were all the finest rooms the mansion owned were always shut against their eager and scrutinizing gaze, or why, when referred to by any of them, the matter was always treated with silence. All that can now be done is merely to allow the thought to dwindle into bleak oblivion, until aroused to that standard of disclosure which defies hindrance. Within the venerable walls surrounding the <laughs> this erection of amazement, her fault and maybe it's that's her fault I'm not sure but anyway oh my god <laughs> okay erection of amazement <laughs> and wonder may be seen species of trees rarely if ever met with yay <laughs> y-e-a -E. <laughs> really says this <laughs> Within the beaded borders of this grand old mansion, the eye of the privileged beholds the magnificent lake, studded, with, studded on every side with stone of costliest cut and finish, the richest vineries, the most elegant ferns, the daintiest conservatories, the flowers and plants of almost every clime in abundance, the most fashionable walks, the most intricate windings that imagination could possibly conceive or genius contrive. In fact, it had, has well been named the Eden of Luxury. <laughs> Dunfern Mansion was handed down as an heirloom since its pur purchase by Walter, 3rd Earl of Dunfern, in 1674, and since then it has been tenderly cared for internally and carefully guarded externally by the skillful hands of noted artisans. The present owner is only son of Sir John Dunfern by Irene, adopted daughter of Lord and Lady Dilworth of Dilworth Castle, County Kent. 
Okay. And then there's a flower. Oh, chapter two. Do I really want to keep going? 